everybody. Today I got this hard drive in here and it's an older drive. This is a Toshiba, looks like a sled type of drive. Really old. Look at that. And if I put it on the back there, there it is a USB drive, but it's a much, much older one. Now, for all these ones, we usually know, right, um, if there's any problems with them, it could start from the encasing and the closure. So if I plug this in, I'm just going to plug these in here. I have so the USB connected, now I also have power. We do get this blue light, but as you see, nothing, there was no Windows noise or anything else actually plugged in until it just happened right there. But, uh, let me cancel that out. And it actually did happen here, but that's part of the point. So actually, let's go to our screen capture. And now I'm showing here that this drive is actually a USB H drive, but it's not actually detecting anything else in there. And that could be a problem. Now, it can be a problem with the drive or it can be a problem with something else. So I'm going to go ahead and just disconnect the cable here. You'll see it should probably make the noise yet again if I disconnect the cable this way. There you go. If I plug it back in, there you go. It does it again in the USB drive, but if I unplug it, let me get it. Now, it's actually going to totally disconnect. It's, you know, take, take, it is, take what it is for what it is there. The H drive is actually not there anymore. Now, I know there's a lot of back and forth there going with it, but usually when there's a problem, I actually don't feel the discipline. I don't hear anything turn on. Now, there's usually something going on with this inside here, right? And it, I actually do see actually some of the screws are actually missing on the top and right, I don't know, uh, top left corner and bottom right corner. I do see some of the actual screws missing. So there's probably something else going on here. Maybe this has been opened, worked on, I don't know. We want to go with the best case scenario. I made videos about just doing this before, how sometimes you can just remove the enclosure and then the drive actually might be fine. But I am interested to see if that's really the case with this one. So this is, a, again, this is a Toshiba one. So let's go ahead and just open it up and see what we get here. Well, I got a little ray of hope right here. <laughs> so I'm going to put it in the ray of hope, make sure it's fine. So when you have a drive like this, oh, this isn't center at all. All right. <laughs> so we're going to be using this light because we are lighting today. So usually these are enclosures, right? And I'm going to just be removing this enclosure and I'm going to see if the drive is going to be fine because when there's any type of power issue or any type of uh, maybe data issue, especially if you can't feel it actually turning on itself there, um, there's probably a problem at least with uh, the board in here because there's a separate board in here that connects power and connected to USB. So these drives really aren't made, especially they're much older. They're not USB board drives. They're just SATA, SATA drives that are, or this one's probably most like a 3.5 inch uh, SATA connected drive into another board. And that's usually the case for them, especially the older ones. They didn't make USB drives really uh, back in the day. Uh, don't quote me on that, but you don't see them typically, especially for these type of solutions that they have here. So now this will actually come off. This is pretty interesting because this will actually slip out. And man, this ray of light really is something, isn't it? Okay, we'll live with it because I think you guys want a ray of hope. We'll call this the ray of hope video. And now if I flip it over here, there's actually a board. There's some capacitors here and there can be a power issue here, right? And actually it's funny because this says where? Where does it say? It says Toshiba, right? This is actually a Seagate drive. Where I saw it somewhere. Let me see. I did see it somewhere, it says Toshiba. Oh, it does it say on the front? Yeah, it says Toshiba, actually on the front there. It's a little bit dirty, but it's actually Seagate Drive. <laughs> Go figure. Okay, um, so now what we want to do is we want to remove this because this is the whole point of it. We want to take this out because this can be a point of failure on any type of uh, external drive, especially the external ones in particular, because you see there's a power, there's a circuit board, and then there's also a power input. There's lots of things, there's a switch here, and there's these uh, capacitors. Sometimes these capacitors can swell up and they can give a problem, but we don't care about any of that because we just care about the data, right? That's all we really want to get off of here. So let's take it actually out of the drive. Um, now, this is a Seagate drive, so I'm not going to go into Toshiba versus Seagate here, but I would rather be working really with this one rather than a Toshiba drive because if you know any of the issues or if you've seen any of our other videos on the channel, Toshiba's ones aren't the most fun. Uh, to be working with so now we got rid of one problem right and now we want to see if we have any type of solution for this one because we removed part of a, of a point of failure i can't really say a problem but there is a point of failure there so now we're left with this one and this is a regular sata drive that we can plug in i see that this um is a little bit dirty sometimes the contacts can be a problem on either side it's very rare that that, that will fix anything or give contact problems but it doesn't look to be too bad but i'm gonna go ahead and plug it in now i have a sled over here i'm gonna try to reach it because i know that everything's plugged perfectly right now i have a sled here uh, that i want to plug this in and i'm going to plug in the USB C and see if it actually connects automatically and, and brings itself up okay so my USB C is plugged in 
Uh, I made a noise before I even did anything, but let's turn that back off. See that? There's a light there, but it's recognizing at least that's the come on. So I'm going to turn this on and get the noise. Now I'm going to go ahead and see if I plug this in and I get the same noise and I hope the drive will actually spin this time. So let's plug it in. See if we get anything else here. Now the drive is spinning. And now we actually get that and I actually do see data that actually popped up there. I'm going to go ahead and bring it on the other screen. I want to show the customer's data and uh, I don't really want to be flipping this too much, but you see the drive is actually lit there. It's blinking, which means it's reading. I don't know if you guys can actually hear it, but it is actually reading totally fine. And now I'm going to go ahead and bring up this one. And it looks like it changed the letter too. Um, and let's see, actually, how big is this drive? This drive is... See, it's an older drive, so it probably can't be too massive, but 500 gigs probably back in the day was a big deal, right? So this is a Barracuda Seagate. It's a 500 gig drive. I'm going to go ahead and put it over there. Now I'm going to go back to my screen capture, and I do see that we do have an expansion drive that's a 500 gig one there, and that's the Seagate one that we have, because I think it even shows a little Seagate logo there. And now if we double click it, obviously I'm not going to show all this uh, data there because obviously it's the customer's data, but I'll show you guys there's actually data and you can see the size as well there. So that's usually the case really for most of these drives. What we want to do too is we want to make sure we make backups of these drives before anything else happens to them because we don't want to be um, having a problem as well. So now what we want to do obviously is if you see something like that, we don't want to chance it, we don't want to risk anything, we want to make sure that we make, you can either create an image or you can make a backup of it immediately because if there's any other problems with the drive, then you're definitely going to have a big problem. Uh, we saw that this is actually more of a basic case uh, scenario because obviously there's just extra point of failures. Most likely that there is probably a problem, maybe with one of these capacitors, some of them are a little bit bent there. Maybe that's what's been giving the problem as well. Who knows? But we want to make sure we get the data off the drive as soon as possible because data is the most important thing. Now, something like this, this is the best case scenario that you can possibly ever have when you have like an external drive, especially an older one that has any type of problem. Um, we just recognize more of the symptoms there and we usually can aim for that because we know that there are um, other points of failures on a drive or at least for uh, making an external drive as well and you can see that old uh, PCB board design that can most likely give problems that most likely is the problem and then you're running a power and then there's a power circuit going through here and then there's also a data line circuit going through here so if those if one of those things have a, has an issue on this board itself just to power on the device and to make it a USB enabled drive then you're going to have problems so there could be multiple points of failure we want to avoid that make sure we just plug it in get the data and that's really it but again for especially a seagate drive that is going to be your best case scenario most cases scenarios for something like this especially if you hear any clicking you hear a grinding noise or anything else that's definitely uh, not going to be anything near this type of situation um, even connecting it to uh, whenever you try to connect it to like a SATA device here, if it's still having trouble come up after you do something like this, there can be a problem with the PCB board, there could be a head issue, there could be uh, damage to the platter. You want to make sure you don't want to keep using it, make sure you bring it into like a data recovery place. That's something that we do. We can go more of the advanced ways. If we need to do a mechanical issue, we can do that. We can repair PCB issues and get, make sure you get your data off. So just a quick little video for you guys, especially you guys that have older devices or older external USB drives or USB connected drives however you want to do that um, just a little tip for you guys there um, if you enjoyed this video please leave a like really does help us a lot we do actually lots of uh, more real data recovery i would say on this channel you should go ahead and check those out we also have shorts we have lots of on pretty much all the other platforms go ahead and check those out as well um, but interesting you know what though it's funny how this is a toshiba but there's a seagate drive in there um, yeah it's just always fun to see that because obviously they use different manufacturers for different things but it's probably how old this drive is it's hard to really say exactly but the interface looks pretty old so i don't really know but hope you guys are watching take care guys bye